What's up, gangsters? Happy Wednesday afternoon to you. I thought I would pop my head in with a quick mic drop to discuss this big wrestling news story that broke today about Shane McMahon having a meeting with Tony Khan. And as you see here, a picture of the meeting was leaked out. Now, apparently, according to reports, this is an actual leak. This was not intended to be sent out. And as you see, Shane McMahon and Tony Khan are looking directly at the person who's taking this picture. So I don't think this is so much to do with the person that took the picture as it has to do with the leak. Somebody leaked this out doesn't necessarily mean the person that took the photo leaked the picture. So this is really, really interesting and really, really exciting. Now, last night, our friend Sean Ross Sapp tweeted out that he was going to have a collaborative report released today with WrestleTalk. And I guess it's the two of them that learned together about this meeting. Now, I don't know how they're connected to the picture that was leaked out. It does have a WrestleTalk logo on there, so I believe it was leaked to them. But Sean and WrestleTalk had this report to deliver to us fans today, and let me read you what Fightful Select had to say about this meeting. And I quote, WrestleTalk and Fightful have learned that AEW CEO Tony Khan had a private meeting with Shane McMahon this week. We can report that the meeting took place in an office at a private Arlington airport on Monday, July 29th during the afternoon, so just a couple of days ago. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful has confirmed with sources that the meeting did take place with Khan and McMahon discussing possibilities moving forward. Sapp noted that Khan had been open to talking with McMahon for a while, but it's believed they'd never met or even spoken before the rumors about McMahon possibly joining AEW emerged recently. Khan is said to have been very open to using Shane McMahon for several weeks now and has also made it clear that he was open to the idea of talking to McMahon when people have brought the topic up to him backstage. Those at Fightful spoke to on Tuesday had not been briefed on a meeting. Publicly, Tony Khan commented in a recent interview on the Maggie and Perloff show that McMahon was, quote, always welcome to stop by at any time and he seems like a really nice guy. Khan also told Sports Illustrated that he has a lot of respect for McMahon as an executive and a professional wrestler and that he's always welcome in AEW. Shane McMahon has been absent from WWE since WrestleMania 39, where he tore his quad just seconds into a match against The Miz. I was there for that. I got the whole thing on video. Fightful reported in June of this year that Shane McMahon was under no kind of contract to WWE, and WWE confirmed that to them in an official capacity. So we know that Shane McMahon has no ties to WWE. That seems obvious now anyway, with the meeting being confirmed between Shane and, and uh, Tony Khan. And I, for one, I mean, this video really is all it's going to be is opinion. What else can you really give on this? We don't have any other news other than the meeting took place, the report from Fightful and WrestleTalk, and this photo of the two of them. So now it is official. They have met. They have been in the same room together, and they have discussed things. Now, I have already brought up Shane McMahon on the podcast a couple of times, and I, at the time, was feeling like... I was in the minority of fans that actually wanted to see this. Now, I don't want to see this because I believe Shane McMahon can come in and be some sort of savior to AEW at all. As a matter of fact, I would feel really uncomfortable with Shane being in an executive role or any sort of creative role behind the scenes based on what we heard about him at the Royal Rumble a couple of years ago. Now, everybody that's ever worked with Shane McMahon, the wrestlers, the boys, have always said great things about Shane McMahon. Listen to any shoot interview, podcast, anything like that where people talk about interacting with Shane, talking to him, being around him, working with him perhaps, depending on you know who they're interviewing. And it's always 100 out of 100 times positive stuff. Shane is well-liked. Everybody that's worked with him thinks that he's a rad dude. He's way cooler than his dad. And he has a lot of other outside business interests. He's had a busy life outside of WWE. He's got a bunch of sons that could potentially come up through the business. WWE is a weird territory for him to be in right now. You know, Stephanie is kind of around because of Triple H. But with everything surrounding Vince McMahon and that turmoil, you know, is there really ever going to be a home again, a true home for Shane McMahon in WWE? And he has already kind of left the company once or twice in the past, and he might still have a wrestling itch to scratch, not necessarily in the ring stuff, but just being a part of it. So 
even though I'd be adamantly against Shane having a creative influence, I'm not so sure how horrible it would be if he actually came into the company as a character. And even with some behind the scenes influence, this is a person that does have a lot of experience in WWE throughout the years. He does bring a level of experience, I believe, that could be helpful to AEW in some ways. You just got to be careful how you use the guy. Now, I really hate that that one story about the Royal Rumble changed the perception of Shane McMahon so dramatically because everything, like I said, we've heard about Shane McMahon in the past has always been positive. And then you hear about how he was trying to restructure the Royal Rumble so he could shoehorn himself in there. And this guy has wrestled a lot of big time pay-per-view matches over the past 25 years. He has accepted and taken a lot of the spotlight before. So I think with Shane McMahon coming in, I was in the minority of fans that actually wanted to see this, but that does come with conditions. I don't want Shane McMahon just to come on come on in to AEW and just take over, and Shane McMahon is now the focal point and the centerpiece of the show. No way. I want Shane McMahon to come in to perhaps help. Don't forget, this guy is still a very recognizable name. It was only eight years ago in 2016 when he showed back up in WWE and received probably a top five or top ten pop in that company. That was some wild stuff when Shane came back. The fans have always loved Shane. They react to who here comes the money, although he's not going to have here comes the money in AEW. I don't think Tony Khan could even buy that song if he wanted to. So I feel like Shane McMahon coming in, you know, provided that he is not there to take anything away from the company and his presence there benefits the company in some way. And that's where you got to find the balance. That's where Tony Khan has got to understand, yeah, if you want to bring Shane McMahon in, fine, but make sure that, you know, he doesn't come in and this whole thing backfires on you either because the wrestling audience is going to be split on this. A lot of the wrestling audience is going to automatically kind of assume that Shane McMahon is going to be that his presence there is going to be and have a negative effect on the company. And it very well could. I would like to think that he would have a positive influence on the company and Shane McMahon being there would benefit AEW in a positive way, not a negative one. But that's all going to depend on what Shane McMahon does if he comes in, what kind of a deal he signs. Is it a multi-layer deal? Is he going to be under two contracts, a performer contract and an executive contract? One of my early pitches for Shane McMahon coming in was to be a heel. He should totally link up with the elite. If this story is going to continue and the elite want to continue on the path that they're going, what better figure to bring in as a part of that group than Shane McMahon? I think he could add a lot to that in terms of getting them over and getting them some real heat. And it depends with Tony Khan and Shane McMahon. If they're going to bring Shane McMahon in as an on-air character, an uh, on-screen character, I should say, do you bring him in as a heel or a face? From a fan's perspective, I think it would be way more fun for him to be a heel. But Shane McMahon might not want to be a heel. No, I want to come in and be Shane O'Mac and I want to dance around and wrestle in my baseball jerseys and everything like I used to do. And Tony Khan might say, OK, that might be fine for a couple of occasions. The fans are definitely going to react. You're going to pop a rating and that's going to create some buzz around us. But then what? What after that? After the fans have seen Shane McMahon coming out there juking and jiving three or four times, then okay, it's over. Whereas if he is a heel and he's a member of the elite and you can constantly raise the bar of being more douchey and more douchey and having a McMahon infiltrating AEW and having Mc, Mc, injecting McMahon poison into the company in the form of the elite, it would be a lot like a, an inverted version of what Vince McMahon did with the NWO. But now it's the elite. It's a faction bringing in a McMahon instead of a McMahon bringing in a faction. And I think if you did it like that and you basically made the elite Shane McMahon's modern day Mean Street posse, you might have something here. Because think of the baby faces he could be going up against, you know, the, the John Moxleys, the Swerve Stricklands, and you could perhaps, this is what I mentioned a couple months ago when we talked about this, I'm not saying you can ever recreate the NWO. You cannot. It cannot be done. It will never be duplicated and nothing will ever exceed what that faction did. So don't mistake what I'm trying to say. It's what I'm trying to say here. And don't yell at me in the comments. All I'm saying is you could create a faction that has a little bit of 
reality blended with fiction because with the NWO, it was Hall and Nash coming in. A lot of the audience at that time actually thought that they were coming in from the WWE to invade. You get a bunch of regular casual ass fans watching this who don't spend all day on the internet like dorks like we do and aren't aware of what's going on. They see Shane McMahon. They're like, what the hell is happening here? And I think that could be a lot of fun if Shane came in as a heel. You also have to remember that this is Vince McMahon's son. So how do you deal with that? Is that something you want to acknowledge or reference? You know, you can't ignore it. You're going to have somebody with the last name McMahon on AEW TV. And given how AEW, their product has been in the past few months, I think things have gotten a lot better storyline-wise and whatnot, but they still are struggling a bit and a shot in the arm. You never know what it's going to take. I never would have thought when WWE was getting their asses kicked by WCW, I did not think as a fan at that time that what would bring them out of that hole was Vince McMahon. All of the wrestlers in both companies, and it's Vince McMahon, a man who's never wrestled before and who the fans have known all the way up until this point as an announcer, it's only been within the last year or so that they're kind of publicly acknowledging that he owns WWE. This is the guy that's going to help dig them out of their ratings hole and defeat WCW. All you needed was him to go up against Stone Cold. That was mind blowing to me. So you never know if it, if it worked then, you know, if you get Shane McMahon in the right angle, the right storyline, the right situation with the right amount of heat and you get the right baby face to go up against him and the elite, you just might have something there. So maybe that's what they're thinking about. I don't know who knows what the meeting uh, entailed. I mean, Shane McMahon, I don't think, you know, he'd ever have to come in as an investor or anything like that. Tony Khan's got all the money in the world. I don't think Shane McMahon would, you know, come in to have any ownership role. But I think that it is definitely possible that his role, if he does in fact come in and sign with AEW, could extend beyond just a performer, on screen performer slash wrestler role. Shane's in his mid 50s or early 50s or something like that. He's not going to be able to wrestle any sort of full time schedule or frequency. This is going to be an attraction type of match on a pay-per-view type of thing. Maybe a multi-man deal. Last time he tried to get in the ring, he blew out his quad in SoFi in front of 80,000 people. So I don't think that you know they want to take too much of a risk with him being in actual singles feuds, but being a part of a group you know, and being a part of a faction and being able to be featured in that way where he can do some of his Shane McMahon stuff just might be a little fun. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments, because what I've noticed online is that it really is split. You have a lot of people who believe that Shane McMahon coming into, the, coming into AEW would be the worst thing they could do. And you have other people like me that just kind of wants to see it, because I'm all about fun. I'm not looking at this from any tribal perspective at all. I'm looking at this as a wrestling fan that enjoys both companies and wants both companies to be as interesting and intriguing as possible. And I've grown up throughout the years with competition i've seen people jump ship and i've seen we've all seen some pretty surreal moments when it comes to certain talents being in a certain environment and the one of the craziest things i think i ever saw or we saw as fans involved shane mcmahon during the simulcast in 01 when wwe bought wcw and shane mcmahon showed up on nitro and he had the shane mcmahon graph wcw graphic something as simple like that is super surreal to fans like us and to fans like me. So just the idea of seeing Shane McMahon in AEW with that AEW lower third, Shane McMahon, son of a pervert. I mean, it would be crazy. It would be crazy. And that's the type of stuff I want to see, you know, and I would hope that AEW wouldn't be self-destructive. You know, fans, oh, if they bring Shane McMahon, he's going to destroy AEW. How? How is he going to destroy AEW? Are we sure about that? Are we sure he's going to destroy them? I don't know if that's really the case. Shane McMahon coming in will be an experiment. It might work. It might not. But I don't believe he would be an automatic destruction to AEW and they wouldn't be, re be able to recover from the damage that Shane McMahon's presence does. I just don't believe that. I believe if you use him in the right way, and a good example to look at is Sting. Think about how AEW used Sting brilliantly perfectly now granted he went undefeated <laughs> retired as a champion i don't want shane to do that necessarily but in terms of how aew used 
an aging legend, I think was a lot better, a lot more interesting, and a lot more fun than how WWE has used retired or aging legends before. They used him. They made him a part of the show. He was a fun part of the show. He got nuts just like Shane McMahon did. And maybe if you look at Sting as an example and think about how AEW used him during his three years that he was there, that gives me a little bit of hope that we might not have too much to worry about about Shane McMahon in AEW. So we will see. I just wanted to give you my initial thoughts on this. Now, granted, this meeting between Shane and Tony Khan and this picture that was released is in no way confirmation that a deal has been done. This is all just speculative. We're just talking here. If he does come in, I wanted to let you know what I would like to see him do and what I would like to not see him do. There's still a very big chance that a deal just doesn't get worked out. Maybe Shane McMahon wants too much. Tony Khan, I want to come in and I want to win the AEW title, the Continental title, the International title, and the TNT title all on the same episode of Dynamite. Tony Khan's like, uh, sorry, a deal just can't get done here. We can't do that. It just depends on what was discussed. It could have just been a preliminary cup of coffee, shake your hand, let's just formally meet. If we... You know, if we click, then we'll set up a meeting in the future in my own office in Jacksonville or at AEW Dynamite one day, whatever. This is probably just a preliminary early meeting and introduction for these two guys to actually come face to face for the first time. So we will keep our eye on the story. We will see if Shane McMahon does, in fact, turn up in AEW in the near future. We do have a Dynamite tonight. Enjoy Dynamite, by the way. I will be working. I'm going to miss the show, uh, but uh, I will give you my thoughts on that. If Shane McMahon does wind up turning up tonight, I don't think he will. Something like All In might be better. Maybe they save Shane McMahon for All In and they reveal him as a new member of the elite or something like that at Wembley. I might actually save a debut like Shane's for TV rather than All In because you want to get the most out of Shane McMahon. And you bring him out on a dynamite and you just pop a huge rating on TBS, that could be a big deal. So I think if you're going to sign Shane McMahon, bring him in to do anything, if I'm Tony Khan, I'm debuting him on TV, you know, to maximize the ratings. And if they are still currently in those negotiations for uh, their new media rights deal with Warner Brothers Discovery, we could see Shane McMahon turning up on TV a lot sooner than we think because they might want to get him out there just to boost up buzz and ratings just in time for them to put pen to paper on that new deal. Got a lot to think about and a lot to keep our eyes on in AEW land. Pretty interesting stuff. Thank you so much for watching this quick video. Enjoy Dynamite tonight, and I'll be catching you tomorrow for SummerSlam predictions. Peace.